I'm here in Montana, above 7,000 feet, looking around on this hill, and I'm finding all of these pebbles and cobbles. But where did they come from? The most obvious source for pebbles that are rounded and cobbles that are this size would be a rapid flowing stream or river. But there's no sign of a river up here today. So how did they get here? Well, it seems that they must have been deposited in a river, an ancient river that was here before the land was shifted, folded, and moved around. And when cobbles and pebbles like this get cemented together, we call that the sedimentary rock known as a conglomerate. Back to Let's Go Geo, everyone. As usual, I'm your field guide, Heather, and today we're talking about rocks that look like they're made up of a bunch of other rocks, conglomerates. And they kind of are. The pieces that you see inside of a conglomerate are referred to as pebbles and cobbles, which just refer to the large size of the rock fragments in them. Now, they're also often rounded, like the one you see here. If they're rounded, we call them conglomerates. Now, if they're angular, we refer to those as breaches. And we'll talk about those another time. Today, let's just focus on conglomerates. Now, the conglomerate material you see behind me is a roding owl, and it's fairly unconsolidated. So I can pick up a lot of these big pieces, and as you can see, a lot of them are quite large. The acts that are required to move rocks of this size and round them, which comes from them banging on each other and grinding, that's what makes the rocks rounded. What could that be? What force could move this? Well, one of the main sources are rivers, and rivers will give us all of this material that eventually gets cemented together and forms a conglomerate. Now, in addition to those stream and river channels, gravity, glaciers, and storm waves can also cause material to form into a conglomerate. But once these rock fragments do get deposited in, say, those river channels or on alluvial fans, how does this stuff actually stay together? Well, it's held together by cement. Similarly in sandstones, which are also held together by cement, but contain much smaller particles, sand-sized particles, these pebbles and cobbles of conglomerates are held together by cements such as silica, carbonate-based, iron oxides, or clays. Now, because these rock fragments traveled quite far in rivers, we can tell by the roundedness that they were very far from their source, we get a wide variety of different types of minerals and rock types that can be in the conglomerate. But conglomerates are usually made up of resistant rocks such as quartz and quartzite. So we'll find a lot of that in these. It's also not uncommon to find fragments of feldspars, chert, limestone and dolomite, metamorphic rocks such as gneiss and schists, and also granite. Structurally speaking, conglomerates are thick bedded to massive deposits and they can be very consolidated or very poorly consolidated, such as the case of the hill you see behind me. When they're poorly consolidated, they erode out easily and they form these rounded hills. In this case, we're looking at some fairly younger Mesozoic to Cenozoic deposits of the beaverhead gravels in Montana. So there you have it, conglomerates, rocks that look like a bunch of rocks that were glued together, and that's kind of what they are. Stay tuned here at Let's Go Geo because I'll be exploring all the various rock types as well as fun topics in geology as I take you into the field to explore this awesome planet. So if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and join me on the next adventure. I'll see you there.